as Alyssa. Well, maybe you shouldn't have sent her out for coffee then. <laughs> Swear to God, I will. Um, I guess start the episode. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of that cyber channel. I'm Dan Cyber and I'm sorry this video took so long. I was just fighting off the hordes of hell. You're welcome. Today we're going to be covering the black sheep of the Doom franchise, Doom 3. Doom 3 started its development at the turn of the millennium. It was an internal battle as Kevin Cloud and Adrian Carmack were against making a new Doom. After some confrontation, Doom 3 began development and was released on August 3rd, 2004. Doom 3 is powered by the id Tech 4 engine. Admittedly, not as epic as a name as the Doom engine, but it still was revolutionary for its time. id Tech 4's biggest feature was being able to compute lighting in real time. This feature allowed shadows to be cast on and by monsters and moving objects. This was opposed to what was originally done with rendering the lighting with the map creation process. Unlike its previous iterations, Doom 3 takes a huge departure from the fast-paced action. Instead, Doom 3 takes a slower, more horror-esque approach to the gameplay. Still, Doom 3 was well received by critics and would later see a re-release with Doom 3 BFG Edition. This included an updated Doom 3, DLC, and the original Dooms. And that's what we're going to be using in this video, the BFG Edition. It made some changes to the gameplay and graphics, which I'll be covering, but we'll only be handling the main campaign since the DLC is a video all by itself. Now the big question is, does Doom 3's horror themes match with the rest of the franchise? Let's boot up the game and find out. I thought you hated this. But I love stealing your spotlight. <laughs> Whatever, let's just boot up the game. Well, this certainly is a drastic change. Doom 3 wants you to know right off the bat that this game is different. It's dark. I like it. So where does Doom 3 fit in the timeline? Well, Doom 3 functions as the prequel to the previous two Dooms. You play as, you guessed it, an unnamed space marine, but it's unclear whether you're actually Doom Guy. This time around, however, we have other key players in the story. The game starts out with UAC representative Elliot Swan and his bodyguard Jack Campbell arriving on Mars to investigate the goings on at the UAC Mars facility. It's on that same ship that you arrive at touch base with your superior, Master Sergeant Thomas Kelly. Swan and Campbell meet up with Dr. Malcolm Petruger, our antagonist of the game. How do I know he's the bad guy? Petruger looks like this, which means he's evil. Holy shit, that guy looks more demonic than half my family. It's like they don't even try to hide his evil, it's just there. Do you have his number? I would like to have dinner with him. No. Don't hold out, bro. On your first mission, you meet up with a scientist who informs you that something is wrong with the experiments, and that hell is coming. Then, faster than you could say there's a portal to hell... There's a portal to hell? There's a portal to hell. Okay, we both said it, but I still have no idea what happened. A portal to hell opens. Oh! Right. We did that. It's then up to you to find a way to close the hell portal and stop Petruger from releasing hell's minions. Or not? Y you could just... Not. We're not gonna just not. But you could! And you can shut the hell up! We're not gonna close our hell portal! I mean shut your mouth. I'm not going to close that either! Unlike the previous games, Doom 3 is the first to introduce cinematic storytelling. Key plot points and events were shown cinematically as Doomish Guy explores the facility. Most of them are updates on Swan and Petruger, but every now and then you'll meet other members of the facility and see hell break loose. <laughs> But that's not all that helps tell the story. Early in the game, you'll get a PDA that'll help you gather audio logs and emails from UAC employees. It's a nice way of getting more backstory if you want it. Or if you don't want it, more on that later. 
With that, the big question becomes, how does it all look, especially since cinematic storytelling is now a big part? Well, the graphics have aged. Yeah, even with the BFG edition with all of the graphic updates, character models and some textures are about on par with an indie horror game today. It's cool. Oh my god! Why are you scary? You shouldn't be scary! Most of the characters seem to be cut from one of two cloths. Bigger, pudgier scientists, or fit, built marines. Oh, and a girl! Yes, women, fear not. You truly are represented in this game with a female... Sorry about that. <clears throat> Besides the killing of the first female character you run into, the builds of the characters are not the only problem. Every NPC's face looks like it's melting. They look disproportionate, odd, and you can sometimes see where the texture doesn't wrap properly. The textures for the facility, however, aren't that bad, especially thanks to one of the coolest features, the computers. Rather than simply pressing A to interact with the computer, your crosshair actually becomes the cursor you'll be able to actually click through the menus and explore some terminals, and it's incredibly easy. It's a nice way to help immerse the player in the game. The atmosphere is also helped a great deal with the new lighting rendering done with the id Tech 4 engine. When you jump in, you'll quickly see this game is <laughs> Hallways are dimly lit and patches of pure darkness are in every corner. It's part of the new horror theme Doom 3 tries to go for. Gone are the days of the heavy metal-esque visuals of the first two Dooms, and in with the corrupted, twisted sci-fi feel of the third. A little too dark for me. I thought you would have liked the dark. I have glowing red eyes! They would see me from a mile away! I mean, it'd be spooky. I don't want to scare, I want to kill! Oh, God. He has nothing to do with this. Most of the areas you run into are dark, so dark that you'll need a flashlight to navigate through this mess. So I guess we should address the huge demonic elephant in the room now. For Doom 3, you're given a flashlight to help navigate your way through the game. However, you cannot hold your flashlight and a gun at the same time, or at least not until the BFG edition. The BFG edition has a shoulder-mounted flashlight so you can look and shoot at the same time. In the original, you'd be switching between your gun and your flashlight to help fight off the demons. It's been known as the no duct tape on Mars problem, as there's gotta be some way to mount a flashlight to your gun. I mean, there's gotta be adhesive. We're scientists, damn it! While it helps sell the horror aspect of the game, it doesn't help with the action part. It's one of the signs that this game didn't quite understand what it wanted to be. Then there is the music. While the first two games, music was a huge part of the game, this time around, it's more subtle and lets the ambiance take lead on it. Now the sound design for this game is pretty damn good. It builds a nice atmosphere of a space colony. That being said, it's not a great horror atmosphere. Most of the stages you walk through are noisy, meaning that any sounds meant to create tension are basically gone. It's a shame since the last two games added so much tension when you could hear imps and demons grunting from the next room. It's another good case for the confusion this game has over what it wants to be. It has the great sound design for an action shooter, but tries to build in these horror elements that can't pay off because you can't fucking hear the future, Dan! Could you turn the music down, bro? So let's move on to the gameplay where the issues really begin to show themselves. If I had to sum up the gameplay, all I can really say is... It's okay. The game does a lot to bring the Doom franchise into the new millennium, but in the process, it may have just took out what made Doom, Doom. As per my last two videos, let's break it down into combat and exploration. Let's kick it off with exploration. This is probably the biggest part of the game that has stayed true to the Doom franchise. Just like the previous Dooms, you can find hidden nooks and crannies with items to help you along your way. Extra armor, ammo, and getting that sweet, sweet BFG 9000. Seems like everything is in order, right? Let's go back to the fucking PDA. Ugh, this pile of crap. As I was mentioning before, the PDA is a great way to get more of the lore, but my god does Doom try to force its lore down your throat. 
New to the series are storage lockers and locked rooms that you can open with a three-digit code. You find these codes written on walls and from computers, but most of them you'll find in your PDA. Remember those emails and audio logs from earlier? That's where the codes are found. Emails are easy since you can skim through the BS email about how they are overstocked on chainsaws. Guess what you'll be finding later? Chainsaws! Did I get it right? Uh, yeah, but, uh, kind of a rhetorical question, but... All right. Not only that, you will find literal spam in the PDA. I'm not kidding. These guys at the UAC facility are flooded with spam from multiple vendors. The worst buzzkill, though, is the audio logs. These too contain codes, and these codes are always, always at the freaking end of the log. Code for the cabinet is 752. End of log. Meaning, you need to stop completely because if you leave the room, you're likely to go into battle, in which case you can't hear it and you'll end up missing the code, so you have to sit there in the same room and just listen and listen to crap you've already figured out just so you can get some ammo you don't need and an armor. What? It simply slows the game down and nothing kills your adrenaline from combat more than a patient's report. That's the big kicker. The lore of Doom 3 isn't that interesting. We don't really learn about any of the main characters, especially Betruger, who I really want to know more about. Just that things start to go crazy on Mars as hell breaks loose. <sighs> Enough about the damn PDA. Let's talk about some frickin' combat. It's slow. Coming straight from Doom 1 and 2, the game just felt like we slammed the brakes and went into a demon school zone. You're killing our kids? No, it's a metaphor. Oh! Whew. I was worried. And what do you care? You'd probably do the same to us. Of course we would. But first, we'd infest them to tear you apart from the inside, chestburster style. Oh my god, that's horrible. I know. They grow up so fast. Since the game goes for a more horror approach to the franchise, combat is slowed down to allow the atmosphere to build up and scare you. Which is fine, but all the weapons and enemies have been rebalanced to fit that aesthetic. Enemies are much tougher, and the shotgun now requires you to be at point-blank range. Good night, awesome sniping shotgun. This rebalance is what really slows it down, since now you will have to expend full clips to put down enemies. Oh yeah, reloading is a thing now. Good night, awesome bottomless clips. But hey, you can aim up and down now, which means that shot placement can do a lot more for you. It's an important part since the pistol can't put enemies down as fast in the beginning part of the game, especially the armored zombie men they throw at you right away. So, let's talk about the arsenal. Returning to Doom is the pistol, shotgun, chain gun, chainsaw, rocket launcher, plasma rifle, and BFG with upgraded looks to the weapons. Three new weapons join your arsenal this time. The machine gun, which is more like an SMG, grenades that will bounce around till they hit a target, and yes, that does mean you. Then finally, the Soul Cube. The Soul Cube is probably the most interesting weapon in the franchise. You get this weapon two thirds the way through the game when you go to hell. The cube requires you to kill five enemies before it becomes active. Once active, you release it onto a hell spawn. It'll instantly kill the enemy and give you all of your health back. This becomes vital towards the end of the game and is the only way to kill the last boss. So, let's talk about the enemies for Doom 3. Many of the enemies from Doom 1 and 2 return with updated looks. You have a variety of zombie men, imps that now climb walls, demons that unfortunately look more like robotic dogs, caco demons that look like dragon heads, lost souls that are now faces on rockets, hell knights that have gotten a complete badass makeover, the arc vial who is just as annoying, the mancubus who is a looking especially Cthulhu-like, and the Revenant that... Yes! <laughs> Go on! How am I? I'm wearing invisible pants. Yep. Turn me around. I can't look at myself right now. Along with those updates, we also have five new enemies joining the roster. The Maggot, Trite, Tick, Wraith, and Cherub. All which are melee enemies that are terrifying. The new demons are definitely straight from your nightmares. 
That trite is a damn spider with an upside down human head. Now when it comes to fighting these guys, combat is much different than the previous two games. No longer is it fast paced precise combat, but rather a panicked bullet spray. My main complaint with the combat is the enemy tactics. Doom 3 tries to be more like a horror game, and the enemies are designed to act more like scares. Let's see, what is the best way to put this? Combat in Doom 3 is just shitty jump scares. Zombie men tend to sit in dark corners waiting to lumber out at you, enemies crawl from the ceilings and try to ambush you, and the fucking worst of them all, imps waiting behind doors to jump at you. Literally happened to me three times in a single hour. These by themselves are not bad for a horror game. It's the standard really, but for a game that is also an action shooter, it's repetitive as fuck. For me, it's what makes the combat in the game kind of mediocre. Aren't convinced? Let's take a look at the boss battles. They may be strong, but my god are they easy. <laughs> Please, you're talking about the elite of hell! One try each. Which is clearly our B squad. The four boss battles you'll be dealing with are the Vagary, Guardian, Sabbath, and the final boss being the Cyber Demon. Oh, relax, Doomish guy. He may be back and bigger than ever, but he's even a bigger pushover than the previous Dooms. The Guardian fight is the most interesting one since you'll need to take out its Seekers before you can damage him, but he barely can get to you if you're constantly moving. And let's talk about the embarrassment known as the Cyber Demon. Oh my god, this guy is ridiculously easy. If you have been paying attention to all the cutscenes and the Soul Cube itself, you'll realize that the cube can stop all evil. So when your BFG isn't doing any damage to him, you probably gotta use the Soul Cube. So what's left but to run around killing the few minions, throwing the cube, and walking away? I managed to kill this boss without taking a single hit. See? There's the achievement. My god hell, your shit is so weak. That's it! I'm out of here! Good? Great? Get out of here! I guess I set my expectations a little too high. To be fair, it is a pretty good game if generic. The problem is, is that the game suffers from not knowing what it wants to be, and because of that, it doesn't live up to its full potential. So what are my final thoughts on the game? Well, unless you want to complete the franchise, it's a skip for me. Alyssa, think. <laughs> Hello, Dan. Seems you fell for my ingenious distraction as my brother and captured your beloved Alyssa, and now she is my captive. Now, Rev, you listen to me. I have a particular set of skills. A set of skills that won't help me in the slightest. But I promise you, I'm gonna go through that hell portal, and when I find you, I'm gonna crush your skull down into dust. And then I'm gonna take that bone dust and I'm gonna snort it up my nose. And then I'm gonna poop it. I'm gonna poop it all. Bro. Thank you everyone for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that subscribe button because we got one game left. In the comments below, what are your thoughts on the game? And until I gear up for hell, cybered out.